name is Dr. Chad Suma with k and Contact Mission. I'm professor of Old Testament studies at Central Christian College of the Bible in Moberly, Missouri. Today I'd like to talk with you about the evidence for the existence of David, both from the Bible and outside the Bible. David is one of the central characters of the Old Testament. He's the comparison for all future kings of Israel and Judah, and ultimately serves as a key person to which the Messiah is compared. This video will exist in three parts. First, we will look at the inscriptions that mention David. Second, we will look at archaeological remains that might corroborate the Bible's account of David's reign. Third, we will look at the biblical text, with the idea of showing that the biblical text gives an account of David's life that would not be out of place in 1000 BC. Thirty years ago, when his scholars were writing about the historical David, all that they had to work with was the biblical text. This, of course, led skeptics to doubt the existence of David. This changed with the discovery of the Tel Dan inscription in 1993. This inscription was originally a monument set up most likely by the Aramean king Hazael that had been broken up and put into a wall. It mentions Hazael killing of the king of the house of David. This shows that by the 9th century, about 150 years after David, it was known that the dynastic head of Judah was David. When it was first discovered, there were certainly doubts on the reading of House of David. But as time has passed, more consensus on this reading has been gained. However, there are also two other inscriptions, though known from earlier times, which when re-examined may mention David. The first of these, the Mesha Stale, or the Moabite stone, was discovered in the 1880s, and in one partially broken area, the reading House of David has been reconstructed. While not as certain as the Tel Dan inscription, more scholars are beginning to agree on this reading as well. A third inscription on a wall at Karnak, Egypt, made by the pharaoh Sheshonk, who is likely the biblical Shishak, mentions the height of the wheat. Uh, a T and a D were often exchanged, going from a Semitic language like Hebrew to Egyptian. This reading by noted Egyptologist K.A. Kitchen is the least agreed upon, but these three inscriptions usually are considered proof enough that there was a historical person named David. But while these inscriptions can prove that a David existed, it doesn't prove that David was a powerful king of a growing kingdom as per the Bible. One difficulty is that there has not been recovered from the archaeological record from the time in which David would have lived. However, there are a few sites that suggest a powerful central government existed about 1000 BC, suggested that David was a real king. First is Kerbet Kayafa, likely the biblical Sha'arim, which was a fortress overlooking the Valley of Elah, where David fought Goliath. It was built in the late 10th century BC as an outpost on guard against the Philistines. Philistine Goth was only a few miles away. The site is almost definitely Israelite, as no pig bones or female cult objects were found there. What it shows is that a centralized authority with the ability to take on a building project of a large scale existed at the time David would have lived. Another site, Kerbet al-Ra'i in the Shephela, went through a period of transition from Philistine in the 12th and 11th centuries to Israelite in the 10th, the time of David. Substantial fortifications exist here that correspond well to those at Kerbet Kayafa. As for more famous sites, the evidence is harder to come by. In Jerusalem, only a few remains have been found, mostly due to the city's near constant occupation. However, some small stone structures simply referred to as the small stone structure and the large stone structure that seem to date to David's time and might have been supporting structures for David's palace. While there remain many details in the biblical account of David that may be hard to prove one way or another, there are some general ideas presented in the accounts of Samuel and Chronicles that fit well within what we know of the ancient Near East. First of all, much of the account of David seems to be a justification of his reign, an apology of sorts. This was common for kings who did not come from the previous dynasty to do as they, they had to justify their kingship. A good example from a few centuries before David's time is the dream stale of Thutmose IV, which is located between the paws of the Sphinx. In it, the future pharaoh, who is not in the direct succession line, tells how the Sphinx promises him the throne if he would unbury the Sphinx. A second thing is David's desire to build a temple for God, and even though he isn't allowed to build it, David gathers supplies to build a temple. A cylinder inscription of the Sumerian king Gudea Lagash records his desire to build a temple to the god Ningirsu and how he was gathering the supplies for that house. 
A third element that might fit David's story comes from the Goth Ostracum, which is a broken piece of pottery with writing on it. It dates to approximately David's time and it has two names, both of which are similar to the name Goliath. This shows that someone with the name Goliath would not have seemed out of place at the time when David lived. So in conclusion, there was a David. His historical evidence can be demonstrated by inscriptional evidence. There did exist a centralized governmental authority capable of building fortresses in the time of David. So David could have been and could have had the authority of a king. Finally, there are definite elements in the biblical account of David that fit in ancient Near Eastern context. I hope that you enjoyed this brief video and encourage you to dig even deeper in David's life. There's certainly more to explore surrounding the life of King David. I invite you to dig into the Bible, discover more about King David and other fascinating figures found in Scripture, and to experience how God's Word can possibly impact and transform your life. Again, I'm Dr. Chad Suma for KPOL and Contact Mission.